Welcome back, everyone. This is Marie Antoinette Wake here at the International Wealth Builders Radio Talk Show. And our guest is Edwin Victory, who is an amazing artist and also a business entrepreneur. And we were just talking about uh, his background and how uh, he was able to you know, accomplish so many things uh, in his life. But my question to Edwin today is, uh, so in regards to uh, your career and uh, having... Uh, the the music industry and then also balancing your business. How is that for you, Edwin? Because I know that it is for a lot of people, it is difficult and it's very challenging to to do the same thing at the same time. It's only people put limitations on themselves. You know, we are made in the image of God and a God has given us the ability to do so many things. He gives us a 24 hour period and it just takes for one, focus. Broken focus is the key to failure. So if you don't focus to win, you'll always fail. So you have to focus. It's like if you play the bullseye, if you play the dartboard enough, you'll eventually hit the bullseye, but you can't just expect to hit it in one shot. So, you know, this is the music business. It's the entertainment business. And, you know, you if you start, it well, depends on how you start. You know, if you start at 25, this is not an easy business to learn. So it'll probably take you another 25 years to understand it. You know, I, like I said earlier, I started at nine years old and I started studying. So now I'm 50 years old. So when you say, how long have you been studying or in the music business or in the entertainment business? I've been in the entertainment business for 41 years, you know? So if you don't get it 41 years and how to balance, you know, and I had, and I had great teachers. So, you know, I saw my dad work. I saw my mom work. So, um, there's no reason for me not to uh, be successful at anything. So, I mean, with the with being creative and doing artwork, the, to to run a record label, it takes a few things. It takes good music, it takes good artwork, and it takes good marketing. Those are the only three things it takes. So, progressively over my life, I went to school. I went to school for music. I went to school for marketing. I went to school for graphics. Then I went to school for video editing. Because I knew that eventually I would need to know all those things for myself if I couldn't depend on anybody else. And I became wow. good at all of them. And I'm not great at all of them because I don't like to be great. If I'm the only greatest person in the room, I'm not great. I need great people around me. So I'm willing also to bring great people on who can do their things and to help me out. So that's how I've been able to manage it. I've been able to do it as well as hire other people who can do it better than me. Wow, that is uh, amazing the way you you shared that because, you know, you're not only looking out for yourself, you're also making sure that you are bringing other people to work with you and to make it all successful. It is also about the relationship uh, that you have with uh, others. And it's good. Uh, it's good to uh, let people know that uh, this is not a solo uh, entrepreneurship. This is really about other people that you're working with. And also okay. learning, learning everything that you need to learn in regards to what you need to do for the business, right? I'm so honored to have a great team. You know what I mean? I'm so honored. I mean, there's there's guys who are on my team that I could not survive with without. Okay. I mean, you know, I mean, these guys, one guy flew from Mexico the other day to, to here, to, to L.A., and he made sure that he came by to see me. Because, you know, and he's also you're always on the phone, but just to see my team and have the guys, you know, one guy, he's my reason, Van Armstrong, he's my research and development guy. And he literally says, hey, go here, go here, meet this person, meet this person. He'll set things up online. He'll show me, you know, just all, you know, and it's just so amazing. My my, my engineer, uh, Brandon uh, De La Garza, he's five time Grammy winner. So if you like my music. I can't take no credit for uh, the sound of it. I go into a room and record my voice and he makes me sound golden. You know, wow. um, you know, Evan Grant. I can't say any bad things about this young man because, you know, he was 21 when I met him and now he's 34 years old, married and travels the whole world. And, you know, he he keeps me he keeps me grounded when it comes to knowing the applications I need to to make things online. You know, I'm a simple yeah. designer, a simple singer without these other guys. Well, I know that you uh, you composed a song for me uh, at one time for Finest Women in Real Estate. Do you remember that, Edwin? 
Oh, wow, <laughs> man. That's a beautiful song, too. I really would love to go back and, and redo it. I think it's a beautiful song. Do you song. still remember how you, uh, you sang that song? I do remember. I don't remember the song right offhand, but I do remember the song, and I remember singing it at your event. I think yeah. it was super, oh, super. I love and it. I met, I met somebody at your event, and we're still friends. Yeah. Crystal, Crystal uh, is, and I, it's Crystal Lindsay and okay. I are great, great friends to this day. She's an amazing artist and she's actually one of my teammates too. I thought at one point, Crystal and I were the, the Michael and Kelly of podcasting because I ended up on her show and yeah. uh, we would do a great thing. So I appreciate, you know, doing that song and being mm -hmm. at your event. And I was even named Edwin Victory by one of your colleagues. I'm not sure the lady's name, but you put me on a photo shoot years ago in 2015. And that lady that was with me, Asian lady that was on, at the photo shoot with me, she said, what's your name? I said, Edwin, V as in Victory, I-E-N-N. -N. And she said, no, your name is Edwin Victory. And since that time, 2015. Oh, wow. I'm glad that, that that's what happened then. But you know what, Edwin? I've always loved the way you perform. You have such a beautiful talent. The fact that you are an amazing singer and then you also have the successful business. And I've looked at some of your merchandise. You also design, you know, this amazing uh, products like, oh, look at that. You have the shoes that you have different um, colors and it's called Victory. So, so tell me, Edwin. I know that, you know, in every part of our life, there is hardship and how you overcome those hardships. Give me some great insight in regards to your overall experience as a, an entertainer and a business owner. Tell us what, what that is for you. Hardship is part of life. Hardship is like chiseling coal off a diamond. We all have it. Everybody goes through things. You don't walk into this life saying what type of hardships you want. These are the things that are getting or making you or they're going to either break you into either winning or losing. There's only two ways to do it. Um, you people often in this life want their microwave success. It's because we're so used to getting everything immediately. They want things now. Not realizing that it takes time to chisel the coal off the diamond. And underneath the coal, there is a diamond in every single one of us. I tell people like this now. Take your name. Put victory on the end of it. And believe it. Because everybody wants it. Nobody wants lose at the end of their name. So if you take and do what I did, which I got it honestly, my middle name is Ed Wynn. Every day, when, when I wake up, there's no days off. I'm not sure about anybody else's life, but my name, which is the name that I know, and it's the name that I made sure every one of my children had, all my sons, well, except Isaac, but it's Isaac Emmanuel, but Emmanuel Edwin, Isaac Emmanuel, Charles Edwin III. And I tell these guys, you're the best of the best, nothing less. So if you say these things over and over, to yourself every day. You say them to yourself. You say, I am a winner. I am powerful. I am amazing. I am a champion. I am successful. I am determined. I am amazing. I am attractive. I am the best. I am victorious. That's what I look at on my wall when I wake up every day. I see it. I say it. And I tell it, it's not because I'm greater or better than anybody. It's no, I've cultivated my heart and my mind to believe this. So every day becomes a victory. It's no day. There is no unsuccessful days, no matter what challenges. If there is a challenge, that's just a little bit of the coal coming off of the diamond that's being preserved. If I don't make it in music to 100 years old, at least I at least I wrote all the songs I needed to write because somebody else is going to sing. I saw Earth, Wind and Fire with my own eyes last night, and I saw 18,000 people singing their songs. Maurice, Maurice White has passed away. He wrote some of those songs. So everybody's still singing his songs. So at the end of the day, the answer to your question is stay focused. Add victory to your last name. It won't hurt. Just put it on your name. Call yourself Marie Antoinette Wait Victory. Oh, means, I love that. <laughs> that means that means that means now we're related as brother and sister because we're oh. in the same family. <laughs> so if anybody hears this, 
just take the time and add victory to your name and believe it. And I promise you, you'll be telling me a story about your successes and not your failures. Oh, man, Edwin, that is so beautiful. I love it. You have been, um, for some reason, when I first met you, it was one of my events. I, I'm trying to recall our beginning, the humbling beginnings that I met you in the beginning. And I remember you have this personality that is just so you know, lovely and shining and the music that you bring into the events is just, you know, it takes me to a different level of mm. happiness. Wow. And one thing I wanted to, you know, that I'm going to ask you this, right? And uh, we're going to wait until the next segment, but I'm going to ask you to sing a little bit for me, right? Oh, wow. For sure. For <laughs> so, sure. and I'm going to give you, you know, enough time to think about that for our next segment, but I just want you to be prepared for that. Because I always do ask entertainers to <laughs> give us a, their beautiful voice. But but today, Edwin, um, you know, I am very, very thankful for that mm -hmm. wisdom that you just shared with us. Because I know mm -hmm. that I have been connected to you for many years and you've traveled. Now, talk to me about your travels. Because as an mm. entertainer, I mean, that's a lot of traveling that you have to do. So. <laughs> Give us a little a little bit of picture of how that is. Shout out to F.D. Guyton. Uh, he's my mentor. He actually was mentored by my dad as well. I introduced him to my dad and my dad took him under the wing, his wing. And I knew I knew F.D. before F.D. knew my father. But F.D. was also very, very instrumental. Okay. But from the time I was 19 years old, he saw me start traveling. I actually at 19, maybe 20, 21, I started working for Continental Airlines. Okay. And I, I was a bag that. yeah, I was a baggage handler at Intercontinental Airport in Houston, Texas. And I ended up um I ended up uh getting, you know, able to go to different cities. So being in college and I was able to not only in college, I was at Prairie View AM University at that time. I went from University of Maryland, Eastern Shore to back to Texas because I started the singing group Ideal. And I, I saw I was already so from 18 graduating high school, I went 1,500 miles away to college. That was my first like journey. And before I went to college, I actually went on a t college tour that took us from Texas in a bus from Texas all the way up to New York City. So I, um, I started traveling and I started learning and started wanting to go to different cities. But my travel started when I was six. You know, my mom had a brother who lived in San Diego, where you are. And I remember jumping in the RV in Mississippi and riding from Mississippi to California and staying with my uncle. And I don't ever remember not coming back to California because I would always like take me back to California. When I was 11 years old, I flew to Inglewood. I met my father's side of the family here in, in, in California. So I, I started coming back and forth to California. So my parents really cultivated this. But now as a musician, when I was in college, I was like, I got the job working at Continental. So what I ended up doing, I started finding out what talent shows were at other colleges. <laughs> so wow. I would take the guys in my group. I would literally take the buddy passes that they would give us. And we would fly to Atlanta. Atlanta has always been a hot spot for music. So we flew to Atlanta. We won a, a talent show at Morris Brown College. And then from there, you know, we like I said, we got signed. And as soon as we 1996, I started doing big tours. I'm talking about you go from doing talent shows with maybe 100, 200 people to doing big tours where it's not 10, 20,000 people in front wow. of you. You know, I was opening up for people like Escape and 69 Boys and all kind of groups. And now I was working on tour with Usher when he was 15 years old and and all kind of things. So traveling I've been all over the world. You know, I traveled all over the world <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I, I write it. songs about it. Uh, <laughs> so I ended up uh, going to Africa a couple of times. I went to Africa and I went to uh, Cote d'Ivoire. I went to uh, Accra, Senegal. I went to Kumasi and I sang in all these places. Like, you know, because I was known as the singer. Like, you know, why bring Edwin along if he's not going to sing? You and know? you've been in a lot of the Las Vegas uh, strips there, too. Oh, right? my gosh. Now, I never knew that I would be in Las Vegas. I never thought Las Vegas. I remember 
thinking now back in Houston, I was like, you know what? I don't even see Las Vegas. So I ended up going to Las Vegas because I was working for Continental and I went to Las Vegas and I lost $400 in Caesar's Palace. <laughs> it's interesting that you lost $400. I actually, I won $400 when my first time in Las Vegas. <laughs> well, no, but I got, I ended up hitting the $400 back. Okay. Now watch this. I was on, I was riding. This was one of my last trips working for Continental was maybe the last trip because I flew, I flew standby and I ended up getting back to late work to late back to work late. And they fired me. It was my third strike at Continental. It was, you know, it was a challenge because, you know, I was working and I was like, you know, if you get three strikes, you know, if you mess up, you miss a day, you know, you get one strike, two. This was my third day missing because you're flying. You better get back to work. You know, you fly okay. standby. And this is in the 90s. It's, you know, it's a little different now. But well, well, Edwin, we're going to have to take a commercial break here. Okay. So hold on. OK, and I'll yeah, tell you the rest of the story. When we get yes, tell us the rest <laughs> of the story. I'm really excited. So everyone out there, you can hear from uh, Edwin's story. So don't go away and we will be right back. 